Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Channel Surfing. We're going to talk briefly about winterizing the boat, which we really didn't winterize the boat, but we kind of did. Um, we're keeping the boat on the water and we expect to go out and use the boat all winter long. Obviously, weather permitting, <clears throat> which is pretty much how the boat ready to go because when you get a break in the weather, then we can take the boat out. It's not nearly as uh, fruitful as in the summertime. You have a lot more time to go out, but there are some still good days in the winter time. Plus, winter crab is open until the end of the year also. So we're just going to take a quick walk through the boat and show you what we did to keep the boat from freezing while it's on the water through the winter so that we continue to use the boat. So we'll start with the engine. Generally the engine up out of the water as you see pictured here. That keeps growth and stuff like that from coming on it, uh, growing on it while it's in the water. We flush the engine with fresh water so it doesn't have any seawater stuff in it. And I use salt away to the engine pretty much every time I bring it back. So with it up like this, that's fine until it gets to be freezing. So if the temperature starts to freeze, like a cold front's coming through, then uh, I'll come down to the boat and I'll lower the engine into the water. Um, what that does, it puts the engine vertical. All the fresh water in the engine will actually fall into the ocean. Um, and that'll keep any water from freezing in the engine. It also puts the engine in the water. We're in the Pacific Northwest. The, the water you see around us is generally about 44 degrees and it doesn't change much from winter to summertime maybe 42 degrees maybe 45 degrees so um, anything that's that's near the waterline maybe a couple inches above and everything below is going to stay in, you know roughly around 45 degrees because of the water and that would be true of the engine so if i drop the engine in the water then the outdrive and so forth is going to be in the, the warmer water and not freeze and then when the cold front leaves then i come back and kick the engine up back out of the water in addition to that, there's two main areas of the boat that I got to worry about for freezing. One's obviously in the cabin and the other is in the, in the cockpit. So in the cockpit area, I've got uh, raw water uh, um, uh, wash down. So there's a hose with seawater in it that goes from the sea cock underneath. I'll show you that in a few minutes. And um, there's also the space underneath. There's a transom sink <coughs> over here that's got some water hoses that run under and there's a hot water tank. I got to keep all of that from freezing. So. The hot water tank's easy to keep from freezing. I just keep it energized to so keep it full of hot water. For the cockpit, I bought a little Pally um, engine compartment heater. I plug it into the, the outlet that the grill uses, which presents kind of a challenge because as the grill comes up, the grill plugs in, it's got a little safety switch right here. And when this shuts, that safety switch closes and the outlet no longer works. I don't have the electric grill plugged in, so I don't need that safety mechanism, but I need the outlet that's underneath to be able to plug the space heater into. So I just put a little uh, piece of, um, uh, something to hold up the, the side so that switch doesn't get pressed. So when I push this down, that button doesn't get actually depressed and therefore the outlet continues to work. So if we look underneath, so there's the cockpit. So that's the Pally space heater. The green light says that it's on, it's got power to it. And uh, that'll keep this whole space. It's got a built-in thermostat that keeps it um, a little over 40 degrees. So if it drops below that, then that'll kick on and it'll heat. I think they said like 85 square foot, which is way bigger than what this space is. And actually the port and starboard lazarettes are actually connected. So heat should travel around the sides and stuff there too, to keep all that from, from freezing. In, it, in addition, I might come down and shut the seacock just as a precautionary measure um, if I knew it was going to get freezing. Uh, it's the only way that water can come in the boat is right there. And if we move inside the cabin, what did I do inside the cabin? So inside the cabin, we do two things. I've got a little portable um, dehumidifier. It collects water. Um, this is actually uh, about a week's worth is what it's collected here so far. Um, if it collects too much, I'll drill a hole here with a little rubber tubing and run it into the sink. Then I wouldn't have to be down here every week to drain it. That's kind of a small reservoir. But it shuts off every when it's full, right? When, when it gets full, it'll shut itself off so it's not going to overfull. But this, keeps the, this gets the moisture out of the air inside the cabin. In addition to that, um, we've got a little portable space heater. A little 400 watt ceramic space heater with a, a cheapo thermostat. These aren't that expensive. It's got a little switch on the bottom so that if it tips over the switch will open and then the, the heater will turn itself off that's a good safety mechanism in case there's any rocking you know big weight comes by and knocks the heater over i don't want it to burn my boat down so i just leave this here in the center you know, and i have the thermostat set to 
right about ambient. It's not like numbers or anything on it. I just come down and it's kind of cold outside. I just turn the thermostat until it just turns off and, and walk away. The other thing is we keep some of our cabinet doors open because the sink plumbing is under here. So I need the heat to make it into the cabinets on the outside to keep those from freezing. And in addition on the, the uh, head door and the cabinet to the bathroom sink, we prop those doors open as well with bungee cords so that heat can get in there as well so they don't freeze. And uh, other than that, we keep our water tank actually uh, fairly low. We're at about a quarter tank right now. But, um, the water tank is all center line underneath the water line, so it should be protected from freezing there as well. And the boat's also got PEX piping for the water, which is uh, um, more flexible, you know, um, should water actually freeze in that. It makes it a lot easier for, for winterizing. If I was to take the boat out of the water, um, you know, for example, and put it in dry dock or something. If, you're, if the boat's out of the water, it's very different. Then you actually do have to drain the water tank and, and try and get what you can, at least drain all the lines. <clears throat> you know, to get water out of them so they don't freeze. And that's what we do for, for winterizing. We plan to keep it in the water all winter. And that way we can use it um, throughout the throughout the year. Not as much use in the winter time. It's darker, so traveling more at night or your, your day trips are shorter. But but still, like if you take a look at the, the weather today, it's November, and you look around, this is a nice day to be out of the water rather than to have the boat all um, locked up and not available for, for having fun on. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of Channel Surfing. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please click the subscribe button and the like button. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. Until then, stay tuned for more, for channel, more channel Surfing. Have a good day.